wonder if it's got going live now so hello everybody welcome to meet the jugglers live and um today we're very happy to have lucas abduk from um from uh, malabarais in brazil and um the idea of these conversations is really to understand you know what motivates people to, for juggling for a really long time and how um yeah what what it, what it what it means to them and how they got into it and uh just to see the people beyond the tricks, you know, because when we're really into our juggling, our personality comes across through our juggling. And, um, yeah, I just think juggling is, is a hard, is a hard mission. You know? So, uh, it, it's good to hear from people that have, that have, that have really gone into it. And, uh, so Lucas, let's just go straight in there and, um, just tell a little bit about your story with, with juggling. How did you start? Uh, yeah. Nice. So, yeah, I never thought that juggling would like take such a big proportion in my life. Such a it would be such a big thing. Uh, I learned how to juggle three balls like when I was a kid. I don't know. I was nine years old or so. I was uh -huh. like in in some kind of activity. I used it to go in the vacation of school. I went like for one week in this. I don't know the word in English, but when. You go out of your parents' house and you stay like with people of your age, like a... yeah, some sort of club. Yeah, it's like a camping. There's a word for that. If I remember, I'll say that. But it's like okay. a camping. Let's say like camping week or something like that. And oh, then oh, yeah. there somebody taught me how to juggle, and then mm. I learned three balls and I used these tennis tennis balls and sometimes like trying to throw it against the wall or something like that. And then I forgot about it for many, many years. And when I was around 15, uh, there was like this Diabolo fever in Brazil. Like a lot of people started to play Diabolo in the schools. Hmm. And then I saw all the kids doing like all these cool tricks, like throwing the Diabolo up. And I started to try. And my, my younger sister bought a Diabolo, got a Diabolo on her birthday. And then I fell in love about it. Like I started playing every day and started like doing it a lot. And two years after I went to my first juggling convention, I was 17. And then there was this convention in the countryside of Sao Paulo in a place called São Bernardo do Camp, hmm. where I bought my first five balls and a contact ball. And then I started working on mixing it like uh, contact juggling with three balls juggling. Afterwards, I figure out it was my my favorite uh, style of juggling. Yes. But yeah, in the meanwhile, yeah. I was also using Diabolos and well, practicing a lot with Diabolos too. And well, yeah, it's been a while. Now I'm 20, 28, so I've been juggling since then. And along with all this, like in 2012, I started Malabarizici which is like the YouTube channel and Instagram account is like a big project. Uh, if you translate it, it means juggle yourself in English. Hmm. And this is where I make tutorials, art videos, interviews, videos of events, and many, many other things related to juggling. There, there are the videos of the European Juggling Convention 2013, 2014. And wow, it's, it's like... I feel like it's the best thing I've ever did in my life, Malabarizisi. Like it's it's something I'm really proud of. There are more than seven. Oh, there's some videos. there's some really great videos there. You know, like um, even if like a lot of them they're in they're in Brazilian. I found them interesting. You know, just just uh, also the the sound of the Brazilian and the uh, yeah, there's some cool jugglers and um, yes, yeah, so. so, so I mean, I mean, like a video project like this could start anywhere, you know, just like a passion going in it. And um, for sure, it's allowed you to to meet lots of jugglers as well in, in Brazil. And um, and um, yeah, so how is it like, uh, apart from now, because it's like this terrible COVID moment, but how is the, the juggling community in, in, in Brazil? Yeah, this is really interesting. Just one thing, uh, almost all of the videos have English subtitles too. So okay. even if the video is in Portuguese and you don't speak Portuguese, you can check the English subtitles. Now, this year, there are some, some videos that don't have it, but most of the, the videos, especially the old ones, have English, sometimes Spanish subtitles too. But 
this is this is really cool what you asked like the the juggling scene in brazil is really creative there are lots of jugglers and I, i'm always impressed by how creativity is a thing here like you can see jugglers like chacho emerson noisy or like sia do relativo with tasio and otavio that are, that have like really really good quality artistic uh, of artistic research and technical research is really cool to see uh, i think that like in terms of style we still drink a lot from the european style like and bring it to the stage and all but it's like it, it's cool because brazil is kind of like a mix so we also have like really good technical jugglers like and it's such a big country so sometimes you have some somebody in the northeast that does something totally different than people are doing in the south or something like that but yes we have a couple hundred jugglers hundreds jugglers that are really connected to like it's it's not so hard to get to know the whole community if you go to a couple conventions in the country you already you meet a lot of people already and most of the big capital cities like sao paulo rio de janeiro belo horizonte have weekly juggling meetings as well now with the with the pandemic and all they they stopped of course but like usually here in rio they have two a week i guess maybe more like every monday and every wednesday and in brazil too every monday there's like a meeting where jugglers get together to juggle and to chat and there's an open stage usually once a month where people share like uh, acts share full shows it's really cool excellent excellent so um what one of the my, my favorite videos I, I saw of your of yours was um was um an edited version of when you went to india you know and mm, um wow I, you know i can't i think it was probably just after i'd re finished writing the book you know and i just saw lots of things i've been writing about embodied in your work you know and i was like yeah you know it's like i really appreciated how you transformed like drops into part of the thing you know and um and uh I, i'd like to tap a little bit more into your flow style of juggling three balls you know like how you think about it and how you practice and how um yeah how you make it a dance for yourself you know and how you valorize your drops and oh there's lots of things in there to talk about so <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's, it's nice <laughs> right because there's there's so much more than than only the tricks i mean i like the tricks i like the technical part of juggling but i was never a really super technical juggler in terms of like i did some side swaps and stuff but it's not that much my thing i always wanted to dance like for a long long time but for some reason i'm not sure what i didn't go to take dance classes and mm. then only after i moved to rio and started the circus school and saw that the circus school was kind of too rigid for what i wanted i went to the dance school and this was like 2015 i guess and then i did like a, a course on contemporary dance but in in a school called angel viana here in rio and what i really like about that place is that they it's not only about dance but there's a lot of like theater exercises and you go a lot on stage kind of on the stage like um state you know so you you get in the state of being on stage really often so mm. this totally changed my juggling and helped me to move more and then by the time i was really into contact improvisation too and which is like dance too but it's also acrobatics and it's also a lot of improvisation so yeah this yeah, changed my the, juggling somehow I, apart from the covid time i always suggest jugglers to get into contact improvisation just because it gives you so much data about how to move where your body is in such a short time you know you just have to get over the thing that you're touching people and people you don't know but amazing amazing way of exploring da dance so sorry uh lucas sorry no no problem yeah it's, <laughs> it's interesting for me because content contact like gives you usually gives me a, a different layer is i feel like it's a bit deeper than juggling when you when you get into it and you start practicing a lot 
because it also brings the dimension of other people. Like in juggling, you're usually alone, you can do some passes and all, but when you're dancing with somebody that you've never met before, and then only by touching, like then you can feel if you can trust or not. So sometimes you, I, I really like the acrobatic part of contact, like jumping and throwing around and throwing people up in the air and then rolling, you know? And then sometimes only by touching the person, you can feel if they, if they will resist, if they will support you, or if they will just fall down. And then it's, it's interesting. And on the other hand, it also gives you all this other material on like improvising, which helps a lot for being stage. You talked about, about how I relate to the mistakes because in dance, like you can feel it um, more clearly, I guess, like where mm. sometimes you're juggling and you drop and this breaks the flow a bit. Maybe you talk about it on parts of juggling. I, and I, I really like the book. <laughs> it's been a while that I read, but like, it's, it's amazing. And then sometimes you drop and it breaks the flow. You feel like, oh, it's, you, you start thinking and rationalizing your mistakes. And when you're dancing, there's no drop, right? Of course, you can do a wrong like step or something like that, but it's it's easier to keep the flow. Mm. So I, I try to bring this uh, this this easiness, I don't know, of of keeping the flow to juggling as well. So even if I drop, I don't care. I keep juggling with two balls, one ball, and then I I take the other one and I try to make the mistakes part of what I'm doing and not like, and not something bad or, you know, or I, I try not to feel bad about making a mistake. Yeah, no, 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 absolutely. Absolutely. So, you know, it's, um, I try not be like categorical, you know, but, uh, like we had just reading the other day, there, there are jugglers and they just decla self declare themselves as sport jugglers and that's it, you know, and that might just be a phase for that person. Um, but um, somehow I feel it's like just um, it's, it's somehow missing the fun somehow. Perhaps it's not the, the, not the game, eh? But uh, <laughs> when I start yes. to, to, to like look more for the fun and, and like why we were talking about this with Catherine um, uh, two weeks ago, she was saying it's really important to understand why, what motivated, mo what motivates us to juggle why do we juggle and then when you understand that then do more of that you know so i don't want to like diss anybody for like being too technical or anything whatsoever you know I, I think it's like if that's your passion now go in for it fully and um but um yeah so what what is it for you then uh, what is juggling for you uh lucas wow for me like <laughs> it's it's really about object manipulation and it, sometimes it's hard to categorize, you know, like I, I, I'm not that purist on, I don't know, don't even know if this is a word in English, but I, yeah. I don't mind that much to say like, I could juggle with this bottle, you know, like I'm juggling this bottle now for me, like this could be juggling. It's, it's not that much about the props and the things and the classical. When I see people <laughs> talking things like, oh, swing boy is not juggling, or boo gangs are not juggling, I just laugh, you know, and I say, this is, <laughs> it's bullshit. Like, <laughs> of course it's juggling because it has a learning curve. It's object manipulation. You can get better on it. You can categorize like families of tricks. So let's say like with balls, I have like, or with Diabolos, I have, I don't know, um, magic knots and I have suns, you know, these families of tricks. You, you have it in so many s different arts and different styles of object manipulation. I don't see why we would say that swing boy or even Diabolos are not juggling. For me, they are juggling. And, but yeah, somehow also when you put a name on it, you kill it somehow, you, you, you know what I mean? Oh, sure. So sometimes I don't know, but like, also like, um, I, yeah, sorry. I feel like juggling has something to do with making cool things with objects. Okay. Kind of like that. And then yeah, if yeah, you're yeah. too stressed about it, maybe it's not cool anymore, right? No, 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 no. So that's interesting. That's a whole other uh, perspective, no? 
It's like, uh, wh- why why do you do this? Because I like making cool things with objects. <laughs> yeah? yeah, it's like um, it's very different than like I want to be the best. You know, it's like uh, yeah, I want to make cool things with objects. You know, it's like just. <laughs> Yeah, it takes you there. Um, I like the creativity. I like the challenge, you know. But what I like about challenge, and I probably mentioned this in another episode, is um, that it can be challenge isn't just more and more difficult, more and more difficult. It's opening our eyes, you know. It's daring to use our bodies a little bit more. Challenging is uh, stopping doing hardly anything for a while, you know. Um, Challenge is... Uh, yeah, it's anything that you not, not you don't normally do is a challenge in the end, and it can put us into the flow. Ultimately, I mean, we don't accept challenges just because we we because it puts us in this state of of, of learning and uh, growth. So uh, yeah, <laughs> we had a talk about flow in on Instagram like a couple of months ago, and Vinicius, the guy who was talking with me, said that flow. Is the um, is the combustible? Is the it's like when when you put like gas on your car? What's the name of it? Like is the yeah, yeah it's the combust uh, combustible. Uh, no, that's yeah. even more like Italian. <laughs> it's the fuel we say. Yeah, it's the yeah, fuel. Yeah, the fuel exactly. So flow is the fuel of learning. He said, and for me, like this is really cool because mm. you you only learn or you learn better when you are on the flow state. Kind this is kind of like the idea. About being sure. the best too, like it's a bit. Uh, I I don't know. We could say like that Anthony Gatto, or I don't know who is the best juggler of of all the time. But the best will always change, you know. Like it will. On the other hand, the coolest or somebody who has like a really unique style, you can't copy that. You can't beat that, because it's. It's when I see some jugglers like I don't know Lucas Castello Branco. It's like such an expression of like originality that I that it's clear for me that it's unique. Like nobody can copy that. People no, no, because try, it's him. But... Probably, it's him. It's himself. Yes. Yeah, we were saying this and with the style, last time. and then you see like original yeah. things that are more than only tricks. I mean, cool tricks can be original. Side swaps can be original, but like I like to see something that I say, wow, this is like, only this person is doing this, like this way, you know, it can't be copied. And this happens with sure. technical things also, like with Harvard, Harvard Hifsten, with the, I don't know exactly how to pronounce his last name, but with the technical side swaps, it's amazing. Like it's, it's mind blowing too. Yeah, no, no, and this is what I love about the juggling community, Re- really, it's just, it's so vast, you know? And um, and I, you know, and I like the freedom aspect of it as well. You know, a, a little bit in my book, my my attempt was to, in a very loose way, to give instruments for um, for people that wanted to dive more into the art side, just because it's seen as something very up in the air. You know, it's like, yeah, I know how to learn tricks, but I don't know really how to express myself through juggling, or I don't know how to create an act or something. You know, this side of things. But it's still it's this step by step as it what as training was, you know, and um, every other art, you know, they have their methods. Like music has their methods, dance have their methods, and juggling is very. But it's beautiful in this way, you know. But I think it's good when people mix things together a little bit. So, some jugglers that have come from skateboarding or from uh, break dancing or hip hop or. They, they or, or music as well or music musicians they they tend to uh, um yeah i would say play music with their with their juggling in a way which, which means not doing it all the time you know changing the rhythm stopping playing and um <sighs> yeah i t- i totally get with what you mean and totally relate to that like even the book, like Parts of Juggling, is is about juggling, but it's also about the other arts. Like somebody who's not a juggler, but who's interested about art, or who's an artist on a different like thing, like music, dance, could take something out of the book, like could learn something and relate to the knowledge there, because it, it's it's on this layer that's like a layer that's like you know on all sure. the arts. 
this is really so, cool. no, I have a singing friend and she read it and she doesn't juggle at all and uh she said this is all related to singing <laughs> uh -huh. i'm like oh well, cool <laughs> yeah and on so, that, yeah. like we we usually put the things on the categories like on one category but the things like in the world and nature are all mixed it's it's all chaos you know and then it it's not like a, a tree is not a tree alone in, in the thing, like it's in, in an environment with many other things. Some say that specialization is for insects, like that getting, being a specialist is like an insect, but a human could be a generalist, like could be a specialist in many different subjects. So you could be really good at juggling, dancing, and I don't know, programming, you know, and then how you mix these things or many other things you could be really good at drawing and at speaking a foreign language and the, the things end up like adding in a compound way they add to each mm. other but it's non-linear you know when you when you learn yeah. dance and you learn juggling you're not doing like this the or this you're going exponential because you can mix the things like of these different uh, subjects of knowledge and they add up in a really interesting way which makes it more spicy i'd say yeah no absolutely uh, to the people watching this now live so just say, let's say a big hello hello to everybody watching live and all the people that watch it later um try out especially in this pandemic where we have access to anything you know basically try out a little bit of dance a little bit of like strange martial arts or not that i mean you could do a little bit of a taster but go into one thing and keep it parallel with your juggling and uh interesting things will come out definitely of uh of learning something else and um what what i mentioned in the book as well and this i, I say this to everybody you know it's like some people say to jugglers go and do a course of clown because you need uh to more st stage presence or you need to be a bit more acting ability or but, you know, as a juggler, we the fact that we're training often, you know, and we're really thinking about all these things all the time, it's really easy for us to incorporate uh, parts of the teaching that we, that we get from other things and, and put it into practice Im immediately almost. So we don't need... The only difficulty here is that we see that uh, the like dance world, the music world, they have much more um, um, acceptance as artists. You no know, jugglers, we're black sheep, you know, and, and we have to accept this role. We're like black sheep, you know, we're, we're out of it somehow, you know. Yeah, um, I totally. But maybe because yeah, so like, also, like, just say this thing, like, hmm. sorry, just sorry. don't get sucked in. Just when you try other things, just don't get sucked in by the acceptance of it and let juggling go away, you know, like uh, play with it, you know, and go with what's fun. So, yeah, yeah, sorry, yeah, go. Uh, Lucas. Uh, I think there's something with juggling that even though it's a really old art too, it's it's not so established in terms of like colleges and like research. If you check like dance in Brazil, let's say there's a lot of like you can do superior course like graduation, bachelor and in dance, in in theater, in music. But circles is w way more about like oral tradition where people teach each other saying things and not like formulating things. So now I feel like starts to get there on the academy, let's say a bit more, but it's a slow mm. process, you know, and f from all the arts in Brazil, like all, all the government money that goes to culture in Brazil, which is really little, like half percent, it circles is the one who gets the least money and then there's a lot more that goes to cinema audiovisual and then to dance theater and and the other arts but uh, yeah i think it's something in, like it's a process to make it more recognized let's say when, when we talk with people on the street like they they know like only the extremes you know like Cirque du Soleil in one extreme by being the, um, the the symbol of success for them on juggling and on circus and on the other hand there's like street jugglers 
and then they have these points, let's say, or like it's only a hobby, it's only a thing, but they don't see all the other things that comes in between. So sure. you, you can be a juggler in a small company, you can have a dual or a company with four p people, and you can be independent or you can have like a sponsorship somehow, and people don't don't even realize there's all that, you know, all these other possibilities. And also that you can juggle for for fun, like skateboard. There are these this championships, just giant things. There's a lot of money on the skateboard market. But also, if you see somebody in the street with a skateboard, you don't feel like it's weird. You Most of the people would see and would recognize it and would know the name of it. And maybe they even know that the simplest like skateboard trick is an ollie or something like that. But show mm. them a, show them a club, you know. M most of them won't know that a club is a club and not a pin. Yes, yeah, that sure, like sure, sure. juggling three clubs is a cascade. So I think there's there's still a long way to go in terms of like building it in the collective imaginary and and starting to make it a, a bit more formal on the education system and all before like we can say juggling is a yeah, not not we can say, but before like people realize that juggling is art, kind of like that. Yes, I think there's. Yeah, but I think it's I happening. Think, uh, juggling, you know, like... juggling always has this very special edge to it, where um, hardly anybody thinks they could do it before they do it. You know, some people they're like, oh, let me try. Uh, you know, there are slightly exceptions. You know, most people are scared to death of trying. You know, it's like, and. Um, this is why I think it's really good to teach lots of people to learn to juggle. You know, it's very empowering. You know, you 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 manage to do the the impossible. You know, and you're like, whoa. <laughs> yes. and, and this with people not being thinking they're not able to do it has a lot to do with how society treats mistakes nowadays. Because all the scholar system teaches people that they have to be right, but life is not like that. In life, you're not right oh. all the time. Like sometimes you make a mistake mm -hmm. and you adjust. Like something happens and you react. It's not about like being right all the time or finding the right answer. Like, and juggling is about like about nature. It's about like doing reacting. It's about doing something that you think is right. You're doing your best. You're trying to to get it right, but sometimes you don't get it right, and it's not a problem. Like you react. You. You know, there's yeah, no, no right absolutely. answer. Absolutely. I really absolutely. like this. No, no, absolutely. And um, it's got me thinking this as well, and I do think this for a long time, you know. it's uh, As jugglers, we have we have lots of insights, you know, into different possibilities, you know. And just the fact that we do something just for the fun of doing it is revolutionary, you know. Hardly anybody does things just for the fact. I mean, we could use skateboarders. Skateboarders do things because they love it, you know, and there and there's all, all sorts of different artists, but not so many, you know. And um, uh, somehow we we would like to be we we're, we're like a little bit out of the matrix, but we would like to be in there at the same time, you know. And I think it's the time to um, look at this properly, you know, and, and and decide, you know, like what is this voice that wants me to feel like part of of of. Uh, of um of the matrix which is the part that allows me to be free you know it's this freedom which freaks us out a little bit you know it's like oh <laughs> yeah and, and you know we don't know we, we don't know what's going on anymore so um yeah okay. i think that yeah. all all art somehow like make this bridge be between the matrix and the out of the matrix thing you know like because all arts relate to freedom and this connection the you know but yeah, it's interesting. Also, like, I don't think we need to decide. This is actually a, a good like place to be. Like, you can sometimes you can be on the matrix and sometimes you can be out of it. So you can use juggling to make money if you need it or if you want it, or you can also use it only for fun. And it's uh, it's good this way, you know. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Let's talk a little bit about um, your videos in Malabarais, like what your what the idea behind there, and if there are any special ones you would like people you think like, yeah, yeah I think you should check out the, this series or check out this video that was like you're particularly proud of. Or, 
Well, my, my favorite playlist like of all times is the art videos playlist where I usually like film one artist or a group. So there are videos there like with tons of people that are really known in the community like Sia AIO and like Amir and Henda that are amazing acrobats and Lucas Castelo Branco, Emerson Noisy, many Brazilian artists too. These are the videos I like the most which are more creative, let's say. And it's like, it, I make the kinds of video, the kind of videos that I wanted to watch, kind of like that, because mm. before, like when I was on, on my teen, when I was a teenager, I, I used to watch a lot of circles and juggling videos. And then I, I kind of make these videos that are for jugglers too, because I want to keep the tricks and, and it's different when somebody who's not a juggler create a video because they don't care that much about continuity uh, and about the quality of the, the shot to see the trick mm. properly. And mm. then, so I, I also want to frame it this way. So, so the technique is not lost by the video. And, but I, I try to invent new things with editing too and, and all. And well, there are tons of tutorials too. Like actually my, my biggest desire to share with the world was like the tutorials to make more people able to juggling or to to organize the knowledge so it's easier for people to start juggling, kind of like that. And then there are tutorials on balls, contact juggling, diabolos, stuff, many, many things like spinning, one of spinning and a bit of clubs. And now, it's interesting too because the project is the project changes as I change because I'm the head behind the project but I want to grow a, a team now and to make it bigger than only me so mm -hmm. while I change the project also changes and you can see the changes along the year at uh, along the years at least I can see because I watch all the videos make all the videos all of the videos and now I've, I've been doing it for eight years. And then like in the last year I started to, I was really unmotivated about, about it because with no, not a lot of motivation about it because I worked a lot and made no money with it. And mm. then I decided to like think a bit, a bit more about the business model behind it and to treat a bit more like a company than only like a personal project that I do on my room, you know? and to realize where the finances come from because i also have a bit of a business background and i like this kind of money talk and this kind of stuff and investments and it's really so sometimes i'm juggling and i don't need like i need no money to be happy but on other times i'm like thinking about it studying and trying to understand how economics work on the whole world and how the money flows and I really like this kind of talk too. And then, well, there's that. And I'm, I'm trying to make the project bigger now. We have some courses now too. And I want it all to support the creation of free content. And then now I have like a paid content branch of the project. So mm -hmm. I, I think it can, it can have some synergy, like one to help the other and if there's somebody who's following the project and want like to go deeper in it or, or who wants like a, a greater support and wants like, then they can pay for it, kind of like that. And yeah. it's yeah. really interesting. 2020 was really crazy, really like, really stressful, but really cool too. Like we went from one course to five courses and I feel like in about five to 10 years, we'll be able to see what started this year. Because my idea yeah. is to scale these projects, to make them bigger, to make them worldwide, and yes, it's and they're all standalone, standalone courses. Like you sign up and you just go through the lessons. Is that how it is? Yes, usually yes. Well, there, there's more. There, there are some bonus, some like live live classes and, and all. Okay, but this is the essence. Exactly what you said. Yeah, yeah, excellent. So there's now there's one about Diabolos. Diablo Total, it's called like Total Diablo. There's one with contact huh. juggling. There's one about creating a number, like mm. 
Maker Act, I think it will be the name in English. We're working right now to make it in English because it's already in Portuguese. And there's one of Hula Hoops and we're launching one tomorrow, which will be about jump rope. So <laughs> Excellent. There, there are these tons of tricks with jump rope that you can do. And I wasn't even, I, I didn't even know that. And then well, a big friend of mine is a super jump roper. And we decided to make this project together and it's juggling, you know, when you see it, you, you say, no, this oh, is no, totally crazy, juggling. Crazy thing to the skip, skipping rope, crazy, it's crazy. Yes. Thing to go. You can do things like going around your body and then you can do a double and it's, it's crazy. You do something with your leg here and it's super cool. Super cool. Oh, I, I like to hear you use full power, you know, like, um, I'm somehow thinking as well a little bit like I'd like to do I'd like to bring pe take people on uh, on journeys with with juggling and creativity you know and I'm trying to think you know what's the best way to do this you know up until now I've always dreamed you know of having like long retreats with people together you know like a month long or, or maybe even longer you know but it's just not possible wow. right now I don't know, you know? but um, yeah perhaps I should try and think about how to set something up like that Let's see. We yeah, will see. This is really cool. The hard part is finding the people who nowadays have one month to stay in, in a place, you know. But it, it could That's also it. be organized in like four weeks in a month. And then people could hop in for a week at a time or stay like two, three, or four weeks. Kind of like that. Yeah. But this would be really interesting, definitely. Yeah, no, it's nice really. about the real life activities too. Sometimes I stay so much on the online, on the screens, that I forget that there are so many amazing things you can do in real life. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I, I just, I just went to Germany, and held a workshop there just to celebrate the the German edition of the book coming out just before the new lockdown happened, and it felt so good to be there with real people, you know, and. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, getting the message out there, getting people excited and, uh, yeah, not stopping, you know, not um, just carrying on, carrying on with, with the best we yes. can with what, what we're at now. So um, I really wish we could make a part of juggling version in Portuguese, you know, as we talked. There are many yeah, we, challenges we'll on make, the project, we'll but happen. maybe one day we'll make it happen. Yeah, we'll make, we'll make it happen. Perhaps... Um, we should try and make like a very short video course or something about it first of all or something. Who knows? Who knows? Yes. Nobody knows what the future will bring. Nobody knows. <laughs> no, but it's what you want to do. You know, it's like, uh, what is your passion? And I think this is so important. This is what I'm studying right now. It really is the important of, of like having an idea comes towards us. Uh, and like we resonate with this idea and just to do it just go for it even if it seems crazy you know just go for it follow this idea and um it will take you somewhere you know you don't know where but it will, it will take your take you yeah perhaps perhaps it will help you to go where you want to go you know so and um i think this is an important question to understand what we love doing you know I think it's yeah, I think the question. biggest question there is like where where you want to go, what you want to do, right? Like because uh, for me, it's like meditating and then acting like meditation and action, like a meditation and action all the time and then thinking about where I'm going and then going because if I'm only thinking, I won't go nowhere. And then Absolutely. kind of like that. But yeah, it's. Well, sometimes when you start doing it also, the, the way kind of opens itself for you too. When you just start and, and have the courage to do it, it's it's cool. Yeah, yeah. And I de certainly don't think every juggler has to be a performer, even, you know? No, I mean, not at all. No. Juggling, juggling, like, it's so, it's it's such a versatile activity, like, it has so many possibilities. You can just, like, you can be a businessman or something and juggle for fun because you stay too long in the computer. So it's good to have a creative activity to raise your arms a bit, kind of like that. But you can also be a performer and want to juggle. I, I remember a, a friend who was a handstander. He, he practiced hand balancing. And then he used a juggling to warm up his wrists 
before doing like long sessions of of handstanding. So mm. there are tons of possibilities. Ah. And then yeah, he, he started juggling three or five balls to for his wrists or, some, or something like that, and then went to to handstanding afterwards. And also even inside juggling, we usually like because we need the convenience of the word, like we usually say juggling as all the juggling arts, but you can be a ball juggler, like a ball juggler and a, a Diablo juggler, it's totally different like experience. So y you can also like try different styles of juggling and this changes a lot too. Yeah, no, I absolutely agree. So um, yeah, I think this is an excellent place to, to stop now. And um, thanks for, for coming. Thanks for coming along, Lucas, and, uh, and sharing your thoughts and, and having a play playversation. <laughs> wow, it's my pleasure, Anthony. Thank you. Thank so you for inviting me. Let's check out uh, your YouTube channel and um, and uh, your website, and I will look for it and put it in the, in the chat here. So um, nice. Thank you, thank you, Lucas. Ciao. <laughs> ciao, ciao. <laughs> cool. <laughs>